Virtual Desktop is an amazing app that allows you to play all your PC VR games wirelessly on your standalone MetaQuest 3. So I'm going to show you how to install Virtual Desktop in two easy steps, and then I'll go through what I think are the optimal settings to maximize your experience in VR with this app and show you my ideal hardware setup to really push the performance of Virtual Desktop to its limits. And we might talk about codecs at the end if you haven't fallen asleep by then. Excited? I know I am. So let's get straight into it then. And remember, we're born to respawn. Before we start, I will be focusing on how to install and set up Virtual Desktop on my Meta Quest 3. But this process works with the original Quest, Quest 2, Quest Pro, Pico Neo 3 Link, Pico 4, HTC Vive Focus 3 and XR Elite as well. I've broken the video down into four sections. Installing virtual desktop on your headset and PC in two easy steps. Recommended settings in headset and PC streamer app. Recommended hardware setup to optimize virtual desktop. Finally, we'll discuss the various open XR runtimes and available codecs. I've inserted chapters into this video so you can jump to the part of the video that interests you most. You're welcome. Okay, let's get into it then. Part one. Installing Virtual Desktop in two easy steps. Step one, open the Meta Store on your Quest headset, search for Virtual Desktop, purchase and install it. The app is currently on sale for $14.99 in the UK, but you can get a 25% discount if you use my referral code, which I've linked down below. I'm going to say this because I get asked every time I make one of these videos. You must buy the MetaQuest version of Virtual Desktop from the MetaQuest Store, either in headset or via the phone app. This is the only version that allows wireless game streaming to your standalone headset. This applies to all Pico and HTC headsets as well. Step two, go to the virtual desktop website here and download the streamer app. This clever piece of software fools your Quest headset into thinking it is directly connected to your PC by using a virtual server. And that is a very simplistic explanation for a very complicated solution, but I am a simple man. If you run into any problems, Virtual Desktop now has an AI chatbot that can answer any queries directly, so just click there. The next three parts of the video are a deep dive into the various settings, hardware and codecs that I use, but basically, that's it. How easy was that? Okay, moving on. Part 2. Recommended settings for the PC streamer app and VR app on the headset. The next stage is to start optimising these settings for your PC hardware, so we'll start here with the streamer app. On your desktop, click on hidden icons, highlight the streamer app tab, right click and open settings. Accounts. Click change, then input your Meta, Pico and Vive port usernames. Bindings. This gives you hotkey options for switching between monitors and VR. Options. Copy the settings I have here, but I will be coming back to the OpenXR runtime and preferred codec later. So make sure you watch to the end of the video for that. One important box that needs to be ticked is automatically adjust bitrate, which was recommended by the developer Guy Godin, as shown down below. Media. This tab allows you to add any videos that you have on your PC, which you can watch on a giant screen in VR. Finally, the About tab, which details your PC specs and allows you to check for interfering apps. Click that and check your firewall, antivirus or other overlays aren't getting in the way. You can also check the version number in the bottom left corner to make sure you are running the most up-to-date software. Well, that's it for the streaming app for now. Let's jump into VR on your headset and go through my optimum settings. Computer tab. Look at the top left. It will show the PC you are connected to and your connection speed. Wi-Fi 5 should be 866 megabits per second. Wi-Fi 6 should be up to 1200 megabits per second. And if you own a Quest 3 and a Wi-Fi 6E router, you should be getting a frankly ridiculous 2400 megabits per second. Settings tab is purely for your desktop view, so it's not that important. However, I would recommend you uncheck the use optimal resolution, even though it says recommended. I use twin 4K monitors and this really messes with your desktop resolution. Streaming tab. This is the important one and is where you will spend most of your time fiddling to get the optimal settings for your hardware setup. VR graphics quality. Simple this one. Just pick the setting nearest to your GPU spec. If you're running a GTX 970, I'm a I am running an RTX 4080. So, Godlike. VR frame rate. I run at 90 frames per second, so that's what I'd recommend to you for now. 
You can always go back and change it later. For example, to get EA's WRC running comfortably on my PC, I run at 72 frames per second to maximize the graphical fidelity. Like I said, you can always go back and change it later. And if it's all gone Pete Tong, just hit the reset to default button here. VR bitrate. If you have checked the automatically adjust bitrate tab on the streamer app, virtual desktop will set this according to your network's Wi-Fi strength. Sharpening. I leave this at the default 75%. VR pass through allows limited mixed reality in certain games. Leave this unchecked for now. Gamma. Again, leave it at the default 1.0. Synchronous Space Warp or SSW is the frame rate drops below a critical mark. SSW automatically renders only half of the frames and every second frame is generated artificially. Currently, I have this disabled as it can cause shimmering and distortion in some games. I find it better to tune a game to run at your preferred frame rate using the streamer tab, in-game graphic settings and virtual desktops performance overlay, which I will talk about in a second. Snapdragon Game Super Resolution, an ingenious technique which automatically upscales an image to increase detail utilizing the Quest's Snapdragon XR2 chip with no apparent hit in performance. Make sure this is checked. Video buffering. This can reduce micro stutters but adds a lot of latency. My preference is to uncheck this box. Center to play space. Check. Tracked controller. Check. Forward tracking data to PC. Unchecked for now. Increased color vibrance checked increase video nominal range i think this makes dark spaces way too dark so i leave this unchecked show performance overlay as mentioned earlier this is a great tool for fine tuning your settings in real time use this to see where your system is bottlenecked and that's it please bear in mind these are my settings optimized for my pc setup everyone's system will be different so maybe use these as a base for setting up your pc then fiddle away to your heart's content remember if it's all gone Pete Tong, just hit the reset to defaults tab. Part three, recommended hardware setup to optimize virtual desktop. Before we go any further, virtual desktop is not interested in your internet speed. It is only concerned with the strength of your Wi-Fi signal, which you can check here. Your PC must be connected to your router via an ethernet cable and your Quest must be connected to the five or six gigahertz Wi-Fi channel of that router. No ifs, no buts, it will not work if this is not strictly adhered to. That is the base setup. The ideal setup though is to have a second dedicated router connected by ethernet to your main router just for virtual desktop. I have this TP-Link Archer AEX75 Wi-Fi 6E router specifically for virtual desktop, which is a bit of overkill to be honest. You could just pick up a much cheaper Wi-Fi 5 router, just make sure it has gigabyte LAN ports. I've had people complaining that they cannot get an Ethernet cable to their PC because of where it is. Well, I work from a garden office and ran an Ethernet cable through the house, through the garage, into my office. But if this is not possible for you, for whatever reason, then you need one of these, a power line adapter. This clever little device uses your house's electrical wiring to get Internet to anywhere in your house that has a domestic electricity supply plug. Plug it in next to your main router, connect via Ethernet. Then plug the other box into a socket near your gaming PC and connect with an Ethernet cable. I used these for years and found them to be easy and reliable. Part 4. Open XR runtime and available codecs. On the PC streamer app, the developer has added a new runtime called VDXR, which bypasses Steam VR runtime and gives extra performance. In some tests, users found an increase in performance as high as 10 frames per second, which is really impressive. Give it a try and see if it works for you. Now, onto the thorny topic of Codex, which if you've stayed to the end of the video, you must be a proper geek, like me. <laughs> I'll get this out of the way first. I'm a big graphics tart, so I'm not bothered about a bit of extra latency if I get all the shiny things. So this part of the video is personal preference. H.264 is the oldest codec and will give you the lowest latency at 200 megabits per second max. H.264 Plus is a more modern version and provides up to 400 megabits per second with slightly increased latency. HEVC and HEVC 10-bit will give better graphical performance at 200 megabits per second, but latency is marginally higher. AV1 10-bit can only be used with the Quest 3 and a 40-series graphics card at 200 megabits per second. Latency is higher than the other codecs, but you get all the shiny things, so this is my preference. In conclusion, virtual desktop is an essential purchase, in my opinion. Being able to play any PC VR title wirelessly on your Meta, Pico or HTC headset is a peerless, liberating experience. If you are very lucky, me, 
and have access to a MetaQuest 3, an RTX 4080 GPU and Wi-Fi 6E, it just goes beyond the bounds of incredible, running the VDXR runtime and the AV1 10-bit codec. But, as always, what do you think? Are there any settings you would change? Are you sticking with your free Meta Air Link? Have you ever used a wireless streaming service? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. Plus, if you enjoyed this content, you could join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and an exclusive members-only channel on my Discord. If you want to watch more content from my channel, you can click here or here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.